Hey mamas, I wanted to give you a little update on my pregnancy so far. I am officially 20 weeks pregnant. Um, it's been kind of a crazy last few weeks. We decided to go on a little road trip um, from California down to Texas. And so we have been road tripping through Utah and Colorado um, down here to Texas where we've been for the last like week or so um, but I wanted to give you an update since I am 20 weeks pregnant and share with you kind of the symptoms I've been having um, some of the discomforts that I've been having and things that I've been doing to resolve those issues so my first pregnancy with Callie I did not struggle with any pelvic pain um, but I think this time around because I do have a toddler that I'm looking after and I'm carrying her a lot on one hip like on one side it's causing a lot of imbalance in my pelvic area and so usually when you're pregnant and you're having pelvic pain it's because of an imbalance in your pelvis and I actually brought with me my pelvis I know most people don't bring their pelvises when they're going on a road trip, but I'm a birth doula and a childbirth educator, and I'm actually doing some virtual doula work. So if you're interested in that, you can check out my website, which is down in the descriptions below. Um, but since I'm doing it virtually, I had to bring this stuff, but I'm glad that I did so that I could show you guys. When you are dealing with pelvic pain during pregnancy, it's usually because there is an imbalance in your pelvis. And so I am right now struggling with pubic pain, which is right up here. This is called your pubis symphysis, pubic symphysis. And um, this little piece right here is just cartilage between two bones. And when there's an imbalance and then it's hitting, it's just like, it'll rub together. You'll hear clicking noises um, and it's just really uncomfortable. And so I've been having that pubic pain and then I've been having like little, uh, having pain in this little bone right here called the coccyx or the tailbone. And honestly, I think it is because we have been driving around a lot. And so that meant long hours in the car that I'm kind of recovering from right now. I think it's also because there are a lot of ligaments and muscles that are attached to this little tiny fragment of bone right here and so when there's tension when there is imbalance it's pulling at that coccyx at that tailbone and it's causing discomfort so i just wanted to share with you some of the things that i've been doing some movements some stretches that i've been trying to incorporate in my day as much as possible to try to ease that discomfort in my pelvis and so when you are feeling uncomfortable a lot of times our natural instinct is to stop moving but movement is so important when you are pregnant and especially if you are having these kind of pains pelvic it's also called pelvic girdle pain which i talk about in this video and i talk about low back pain and pelvic pain and things that you can do to resolve those issues so make sure you check that out if you haven't already but i kind of wanted just to share about um my my personal experience and what i'm doing specifically on the road for this pregnancy so i have been oh i've been walking a lot i've been hiking but the thing with hiking is that there's a lot of times imbalance in your steps and so when you're doing that you're causing more imbalance so if you are struggling with pelvic girdle pain which is pain primarily located in the front of your pelvis on your hips on your low back even down the thighs sometimes then you want to make sure that you are trying to stay as balanced as possible and I go really in depth about this in my course, in my online course, Built to Birth, which you can access down in the description below. Um, I talk about how to relieve pain in that. I talk about how to um, bring about stability in your pelvis. Uh, and I talk about how to have a happier, healthier, and easier pregnancy that's going to lead up to your birth and then help you on the flip side dur during your postpartum period. And so I talk all about that in the Built to Birth online course, which you can check out in the description below. But um, so with hiking, it is it can kind of be uncomfortable because it's causing a lot of like of these movements where you're creating more imbalance in the pelvis. But it's just kind of the nature of road tripping. There's a lot of hikes that we want to go on and I've got a to toddler to hold. And so I'm just doing what I can. Um, but exercise is still really important. Swimming, we've been swimming as much as we can because that's really helpful um, because it helps you not feel 
the weight of gravity and your joints and your ligaments and all of that can be a lot more fluid. Um, I'm also sleeping with my pregnancy pillow officially. Um, I have been sleeping with it for probably maybe like three or four weeks. It is really helpful in when you're when you get to that about like 16 18 weeks your belly and your baby the amniotic fluid the placenta all of that good stuff starts to get a lot heavier and so it puts more pressure on uh, the veins that take the blood back to the heart and so you want to make sure you're taking um, extra precaution not to lay on your back for long periods of time as you get more and more pregnant and so i'll link down the down below the pregnancy pillow that I have and that I love, um, but it's really helpful in helping you one, stay on your side, but also it helps with maintaining alignment in your pelvis. And so when you are sleeping, you want to try to lay on your side. They say that left lay, lying on your left side is best, but either side works. But when you do, you wanna sleep with a pillow between your legs and you wanna to try to create alignment between your hips, your knees, and your uh, ankles. And so that's why having a pregnancy pillow is so nice because it allows you to have that full range of pillow so that you can create that alignment from your hips to your ankles. Um, and then it also this pregnancy pillow like wraps around so then it also supports your back. And so I love it. I think it's super comfortable. I think it's the pretty standard pregnancy pillow, but again, I'll link it down below for you to get yours if you don't already have one. So sleep is a big thing because you do that for half of the time. So half of those 24 hours, I mean, not quite half of those 24 hours, but for seven, eight, nine, ten of those hours that you're sleeping at night, your body is either in a position where you are going to cause misalignment or you are going to help aid in alignment. And so you want to try your best to keep that alignment while you are sleeping and a pregnancy pillow can do that. So that is a big thing with sleep. And then I've been doing stretches and movements that I'm going to show you with my birth ball because I also brought my birth ball on this road trip because I wasn't going to forget it. It has been a total lifesaver when we have stopped so that I can, whenever I'm sitting, I have the birth ball to sit on or I have the birth ball to do exercises on. So again, I will link that down below in the description so that you can get your own. If you don't have a birth ball and you're pregnant, believe me, you have to get one. So um, hop on that. I love this one. It's by the company called The Birth Ball um, and it's the best one that I've used. So definitely recommend getting it. But I'm going to show you really quick. I'm going to take you outside and do some of the movements and the stretches um, and positions that I've been doing that have really helped with my tailbone discomfort and my pubic symphysis discomfort, My um, that, that middle part in the front. So I'm going to take you outside and we're going to do that together. Okay, so we are outside and I am currently sitting on my birth ball right here, the one that I've linked down below. Um, and I'm going to put you guys right here so that you can see me. And we're going to start with some movements on the birth ball. So I'm going to back it up just a little bit. Um, hopefully you guys can hear me okay and I'm gonna turn so that you can see what I'm doing. So I'm feeling a lot of pain down here. Not a lot, but just some right here. It's right at that coccyx bone. So right where that tailbone, where your like spine feels like it ends is where I'm feeling discomfort and a lot of mamas experience a lot of discomfort there as well. And so on the birth ball, it's great because you're able to have a little bit more movement than when you are on a solid hard chair, which is why a birth ball is so great. So on the birth ball, I first just sort of roll it out and do what feels comfortable to me. It's almost like I'm doing cat and cow, the yoga pose, but doing it on the birth ball. So just like this back and forth. And I really just do it as much as feels comfortable to me. And honestly, what feels best is when I arch my back out, I can definitely feel that stretch in my tailbone area. And so I'll do that one for a few minutes to whatever feels best for me. And then I'll do some hip circles. And so again, what that is doing is just creating room in the pelvis. It's stretching out 
those muscles that might be pulling on that tailbone area and it's just creating a little bit more movement than you would normally have when you are sitting on a chair. Um, I don't know about you, but I don't do this when I'm sitting at the dining room table at a dining room chair. <laughs> but maybe that's just me, I don't know. Okay, so after I do those, I will just do stretches where I let my head hang down in my arms and I just stretch, stay here and stretch as long as comfortable. I try to do each of these movements for a minute three for about like three or four times. So total is about four, three to five minutes that I'll do them, but I'll do them for a minute long. So I'll just stretch like this. I sometimes put my hands down, but typically I just let my body hang and I feel the lengthening of my spine all the way up and down. And I just focus on my breath as I'm down here. Kind of pedal out your legs a little bit, see what feels good, feels the most stretch. You don't wanna overdo it, so if you feel like you can't go down as much, then you don't have to go down as far. You just really wanna hang in a position, in a length that feels most comfortable to you. Um, so after that one, I will do the downward dog, just like this. Again, you wanna just pedal out your feet, do what feels right to you. And what that's doing is bringing length to all of these muscles here in your legs and in your lower back, which might be pulling at like the pelvis or that tailbone um, area where it's connected to the tailbone. Because a lot of times when you have a tight glute, then you're going to have, or tight glutes, you're going to have um, some kind of lower back pain as well. And so that's helping with lengthen and uh, create less tension in those muscles so that you don't experience that pain. Um, okay, so I'll do that again. I try to do it for about a minute and before moving on to the next stretch. So the next one I will either do on the birth ball or I will do it just sitting down, but I'll do it on the birth ball here. And I put my knee or I put my ankle over my knee and I just stretch it forward. And you can feel this in your hip flexors, which is right here where your leg meets your hip. Those are your hip flexors and you just stretch it out. I always pull, push my knee down a little bit and then lean forward, and that helps create a deeper stretch for me. So again, I do this for a minute, and I'm breathing, and every time I exhale, I try to deepen the stretch a little bit more because I wanna create as much um, length as I can because that's what feels most comfortable later. Um, a lot of times I'll do this at the end of the day after I've been sitting and doing work um, and I feel like my body is really tight. Um, whereas if I do this consistently a few times throughout the day, by the end of the day, I feel a lot more loose. And I feel a lot more lengthened. So I definitely feel it more on this side. I have a lot more tension and tightness on this leg. Um, but again, about a minute and then we'll switch to the next movement. All right, so the next movement that I do is the windmill and that's where you just stand hip width apart. If you are having that pubic pain, then having your knees spread far apart is really uncomfortable. So you just wanna make sure that you spread, it, spread them apart in a way that's comfortable for you. So this is about um, just the width that I want to do it. You don't need to go all the way out, but you just want a little bit of distance between your feet. Um, and then you'll put your hand down, or if you need to, if you can't go down all the way, put something in front of you, either a block or, um, you know, a stool or a birth ball. And then you stretch up and look to the sky. And I'll probably do this for about 30 seconds 
before switching to the other side. So 30 seconds on each side. And it feels so good. And so you'll just do that one for 30 seconds each on each side. And then again, I try to do that three, four, five times. All right, so for the next position, I'm gonna come down here because this is where I do my squat. Um, so this is my low squat. My ball's gonna stay here, okay it is. And so for me, I am able to do this without needing, um, and I know I'm kind of cut out of the frame, <laughs> but um, I can do this without needing something to hold on to. But if you need something to hold on to, then just do it on a table that you can hold on to or a ledge that is sturdy. Um, but for me, I can do this without uh, having anything to hold on to. But I'll come back up a little bit and do it from the side. So I just have my feet pointing outward and I come down into a low squat and I use my arms between my legs to balance me out a little bit so that I have a little bit of support doing this. I can do it without it, but it's not as comfortable and I wanna be able to really deepen and sink into the stretch and so using your arms is really helpful. And this one I definitely try to do for a minute, several times, so. So after that, I do a butterfly stretch. And if this is hard for you, then just do this. Just work on getting your mobility and stretch to feel right. So if this is all you can do, if maybe you only come to here or here, that's totally fine. Just do whatever feels right to you. And if it's a lot of tension just doing this, then keep your back straight and just focus on that stretch. However, if you feel like this is fairly easy, then you come forward and you stretch out. And also this is easy for me because I don't have a big belly yet. If I had a bigger belly, this might be a little bit more challenging, but because I don't have a big old belly, then I'm able to come forward and I oftentimes will walk my hands out. And again, I feel this in those hip flexors from like my groin all the way down to the back. Um, so I know this is stretching me out. And this also helps with, with glutes as well. So I'll just hold this for about a minute, which I know this isn't a minute, but hold it for about a minute, kind of come up. And then sometimes I'll bring them out farther and I'll do the same thing. And then I'll bring them back in and I just do it to what is comfortable for me. Then I just go through those movements and positions and motions again. And I find that it helps a lot with um, my pelvic pain. So uh, my pelvic and my, my uh, tailbone pain. So those are stretches that I mostly do. If I am trying to do more of like a workout, then I will do the glute bridge, which I talk about in the video that I linked earlier about lower back and pelvic pain. So um, I definitely recommend checking that out. This is more what I'm doing on the road, um, what's kind of been working for me. And so uh, the other one's a little bit more professionally done. This is just my vlog. So um, just want to give you that little update about what I'm doing to help with just the sensations of pregnancy. So if you are feeling pain, know that you're not supposed to endure and just like suffer through it. There's so many things that you can do to help uh, lessen that discomfort and bring a resolution to that discomfort. So this is the belly right here, 20 weeks. Little baby, so we're gonna find out the gender in a few weeks. We can't do it here just because we have like only emergency care in um, like out of state. So once we get back to our home in California, we'll be finding out the gender and sharing that with you guys. So we can't wait, but that is our 20 week update. And I hope it's helped you if you are dealing with discomfort in pregnancy. So if you are, definitely try those movements out. I think it'll help you a lot. Um, but until then, I'll see you next time. Bye mamas.